How would an IIM grad leave his good corporate job and join a PhD program? Let's find out. So I'm back in Atlanta. Last year when I was here, I made a video of reliving my PhD life. But today, when I'm back in Atlanta, I will show you a video of a current PhD student. Now an interesting development that we have had since then is that the PhD student office and the whole Robinson College of Business has moved to a new building. Okay, and let me just show you the new building. It's called 55 Park Place. It's a huge building up there. We'll show you a current PhD student's life and we'll meet Sudeep who finished his MBA from IIM Calcutta and then he worked in the corporate world and he decided to, to quit his job and join Georgia State University as a PhD student instead. This is a very interesting building to look at. Woohoo! It almost looks like a hotel. Okay. Hi, Sudeep. Hi, hello, Professor. How are you? Oh, fantastic. Good to meet you. Okay, so we are in a brand new sparkling office. Okay, I used to work in that building. Okay. Okay, so I used to work in GP building uh, on 19th floor, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, interesting. So, uh, show your office. So, this is my office. This is where I sit and okay. end work. And these are all PhD cubicles, is it? Yeah, all of them. So, all of these cabins that you see over here are uh, faculty offices. Okay. So Sudeep, tell me about your educational background. What was your bachelor's degree in and where from? So I did my bachelor's degree in engineering mm -hmm. from uh, IIT Patna okay. in Bihar. Uh, so I graduated in 2014. Mm -hmm. And the post that I did my master's, master's or MBA from IIM Calcutta. Okay. And the post that I kind of worked for four years before joining this PhD program. So are you from Patna? Where are you from? Uh, no, I'm not from Patna. I'm from uh, Andhra Pradesh. Okay, which part of Andhra? It's in the coastal part of Andhra, from Guntur district. Guntur, okay. So you went to IIM Calcutta, right? Yes. Okay, so tell me, uh, what was your percentile in CAT? You took CAT to get into IIM, right? Yeah, yeah. So I got uh, slightly about 99 percentile in CAT. What was your percentile? It's, a, it's, it's 99 point something, I don't remember it that well. Okay. And what IAMs did you get a call from? I got a call from all of the the big IAMs, okay. uh, but but uh, I couldn't convert Ahmedabad and Bangalore. Okay. But but the rest of all the IAMs, I, I got an admit. You got admits from all IAMs and yeah. you decided to go to IAM Calcutta, of course. Yeah, yeah. That's because is that because it's highest ranked among those admits? Oh uh, yeah, that's the, that's the best institute that I got an admit from. Okay. So, what was your experience at IIM Calcutta like? Uh, IIM Calcutta is a great place. Mm -hmm. So, it's a great place where uh, the faculty are amazing and, and the curriculum, everything is, is, is very nice and the, the, the atmosphere at IIM Calcutta is also good where you get to learn a lot from your peers as well as the campus infrastructure. It's, it's one of the best in India. So, overall it was really amazing. And where did you get placed after IIM? Where did you work? So I worked with IBM right after graduating, right after graduating from IIM Calcutta. Mm -hmm. I worked there for three years, close to three years as a consultant. Mm -hmm. And post that, I, I kind of made a switch to another company called Gartner. Gartner. And how long did you work at Gartner? Uh, slightly about one year. And, okay. and after that, I came, I came and joined the PhD program. So why you worked for IBM and Gartner? What did you do in those companies? Yeah, so at IBM, uh, I was working as a consultant working with clients on different projects, most related to uh, IT and uh, IT process management, IT uh, strategy consulting. And at Gartner, uh, more or less the same, working on special projects, driving up productivity. Did you like your job at IBM and Gartner? Oh yeah, definitely. So a lot of learning opportunities. So I joined, uh, so IBM was my first job. So I'm, I'm, I was basically a fresher over there and uh, I had to start from level zero and then, you know, 
reached to a certain point where I felt confidence in in my abilities and in my skills as well. So, so your first job will always be your most memorable job where you you know it will give you a start. Mm -hmm. And then while you were working at Gartner, you choose to quit and join the PhD program instead, right? Okay, so tell me then, okay, how did you think of going for PhD? Oh uh, yeah, so uh, while I was in I am Calcutta, at that time I didn't think of higher education. I thought that would be my last. But then over uh, over time, my interest in PhD has increased because I thought uh, I thought firstly I thought why not because it's a, it's a challenging thing to do a PhD program, mm -hmm. and uh, and my work experience has you know has informed me in taking this decision where I primarily worked with uh, some of some challenging problems and I felt that you know those can be addressed or those can be better looked at from the lens of a PhD program so that's that made my you know uh, push that that can kind of created a push in me to pursue higher education yeah so doing a PhD after graduating from IM is not a unique thing okay. a lot of people have done it and a lot of IM grads have gone on to get their PhD in, in, in fields of business, in fields of economics. Even some of my seniors from IM Calcutta are doing their PhD. Some of them have done it long back and are now distinguished scholars. Uh, as, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, Raghuram Rajan, who is an alum of IMA, mm -hmm. um, has done his PhD as well. So, in economics to be precise so so it's not it's not a uh, you know out of the ordinary thing to do uh, but it's PhD. Not just economics a lot of information system scholars who are from am Calcutta yeah. like uh, dr. Sammamurthy who is the Dean of uh, yeah. University of uh, Wisconsin at Madison mm -hmm. in their College of Business is an IM grad. Yeah, there's there's a Dr. Anindya Ghosh of NYU. He's a top scholar. Yeah, he's, he's also from IM Calcutta? Yeah, he's also from IM Calcutta. Okay. Not with me that you choose to go for a PhD in information systems. Mm -hmm. What made you choose Georgia State University in particular? Well, uh, GSU is, is uh, reputed for their competence in information systems. And if you look at uh, uh, the r department rank. It's mm -hmm. this depart the IS department at GSU is one of the top ranked IS. I think it's in top ten, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We have some of the best faculty who publish in premium premier journals and and their research is, is very well cited as well. So before I joined the program over here, I spent a lot of time talking with my potential advisor, Dr. Arun Rai, who's a top scholar, and who I guess also happens to be your advisor, right? Yep. Yeah, so um, I spent some time with him and uh, and I really liked him, I really liked his approach and I really liked his vision for a PhD student, so all, so that culminated in my in me joining this, this department and uh, working under him. Let me tell you one thing then, mm -hmm. he is the best professor in the whole world, <laughs> okay, and he's the best doctoral advisor in the history of humankind. Mm -hmm. So what year are you in right now? So. I just finished my first year, starting my second year. So how has your experience been so far? So my experience over here has been uh, great. Uh, the learning curve has been steep. I would rather say exponential. And uh, every day is a new challenge where uh, I learn something new, interact with new people. And uh, the PhD program also provides great networking opportunities as well, where uh, you know I can interact with scholars from across the world, attend conferences. Attend uh, attend seminars and then talk with new people. Get to learn, get to learn and know what they're doing. So, so it's a it's a, it's a very interesting uh, phase in my life where where I'm having a lot of fun as well as working hard as well. So, how does one week in your PhD program look like, and what are the classes that you're taking right now? Yeah, so I take three classes. Uh, one of them our department seminar course, some econometrics and method classes. Mm -hmm. uh, so. And on top of the classes that I take, I also do my uh, project and research work. Mm -hmm. So a week, I would say, is is uh, is uh, pretty much hectic, but but still I have a lot of fun working with uh, some amazing minds, and uh, also the classes are also fun. Get get to know new stuff. Okay. So what is your research area right now? Do you have a research topic that you're working on? Yeah. So I'm interested in artificial intelligence. 
okay. the impact of AI on business and society. Mm -hmm. I'm also interested in innovation. I'm looking closely at uh, how firms innovate by producing patents. And I also am like developing an interest in uh, large scale policy, the impacts of large scale policy or our government legislations on innovation. So these are some of the research tracks that I'm currently uh, working on and, and hope to work in the future. That's interesting, okay, because in the next three to five years, uh, topics like cyber security, artificial intelligence, policies related to these two topics will be one of the most in-demand skills when you go into the job market actually. Yeah. The conventional thinking is that you either go for a research-oriented career and pursue a PhD program or you can get an MBA and work in the corporate world. You are one of the few people who have done both, right? So how would you compare a corporate job versus the life of a PhD student in terms of your learning and job satisfaction? Yeah, I think the corporate job as well as the PhD program, each of them have their own challenges. And as far as uh, the, your first point, the learning is concerned, I think I think you can learn in, in on your job as well as learn in the PhD program. But in the, in, in, in the corporate job, I think uh, there'll be a point where your learning gets saturated because you'll be routinized to your work to some extent. While in the PhD program, uh, you'll be you'll be learning for the whole four or five years of your uh, PhD of the whole program duration. So you know the, the learning is deep, and uh, and in terms of your second point on job satisfaction, I think I think uh, it depends on person to person. Some person might find his calling in a PhD. Another guy might you know enjoy his job better. So it, it it's job satisfaction, I would say, is a very individual specific thing. So as far as I'm concerned, I, I like had fun while I was in the corporate sector and I'm having fun and enjoying my life in the PhD program as well. So so I'm good on both ends. Yeah, but but one but I think the one uh, defining aspect that distinguishes PhD from from the corporate job is the amount of control or autonomy you have in terms of the things that you do uh, in in a phd program you are you are free to do anything you want any any project that you work on mm -hmm. you can customize your own research plan you can you know plan your plan out your progress and everything you know comes down to your hand so so you're the sole guy who's responsible for your uh, growth and development. So what do you want to do after you finish your PhD? So in my case, I would like to keep all the options open. When you say your options are open, what are those options? Well, it could be either I could go into academia or I could go back to the corporate world or or there might be something else as well. Who knows? But academia is a niche sector. So what would you say to someone who is aspiring to go for an MBA program or who is an MBA student already? Mm -hmm. Should they consider a PhD program? Uh, how do you see the whole thing spanning out? So for a person who is aspiring to do an MBA, I would say uh, get your MBA from a reputed university where that will maximize your chances of getting a good placement. And for an MBA guy who is thinking of PhD, uh, I would like to tell him to you know, do your background research properly. Uh, you know, think deeply about uh, your interests and, and be certain whether you want to do a PhD or not because once you join the PhD program, it's like a four to five year commitment and, and, and you don't want to back out in the, in the middle of the process, right? So do your research, uh, identify the, the professors or scholars that you would like to work with beforehand and, and uh, try to get in touch with them try to engage them and, and also try to read their papers uh, and, and identify the field that you would or, or the field or the research topic that you would like to, to work on. And so, uh, so let me ask you something uh, since you've been asking me all the questions so <laughs> I'm not getting any time to ask you something. Okay. So since you spent close to five to six years in the program uh, so what do you think about the commitment? See. Uh, the point is that even though I spent five to six years in the PhD program, uh, even before I started my PhD program, some people discouraged me, saying that you will be that much older, you will turn 30 by the time you graduate, and all that, all such things, right? Uh, my point was that even if I don't go for PhD, 
if I don't die, I will still turn 30, <laughs> right? <laughs> that was one thing. And second thing is that I had a lot of fun, even during the PhD program, people think that uh, PhD students study all the time. Yes, we do. Uh, but we also get to have a lot of fun. We have conferences, right? And uh, we our biggest conference is called International Conference on Information Systems or ICIS, right? And uh, every third year it is in the US. But which means that two out of three years it is outside of America. So you get to travel the world. Yeah. You know, uh, I, as a PhD student, I actually traveled to Italy, Germany, Czech Republic, Netherlands, Belgium, New Zealand. Wow. <laughs> okay. I traveled to all these countries for mm -hmm. conferences. Okay. So you get to do a lot of tourism as well. You go for the conference, you attend the conference, and then you take uh, 10 days to two weeks outside the conference to travel whichever the location is. In fact, this year in December, the conference is in Copenhagen, Denmark. Next year, the conference is in Hyderabad, India, yeah. right? So they keep changing the location to some very interesting places. And not just that, and my point was that uh, in the PhD program, I had almost all the freedom to explore whatever topic I wanted to explore. And you uh, briefly spoke about it. So I worked briefly in corporate world and my uh, the key difference was that in corporate world you are working on a certain project and if that project is important and if your role is important in that project you have to continue doing that whether or not you are completely invested in it mentally. Whereas in a PhD program you choose what you wanted to invest yourself mentally right and then you develop an expertise. So a key point here is that the whole fundamental of going for a PhD program is that uh, against a lot of people what they think is that they know a lot. PhD graduate does not actually know a lot about many things. They know a lot about small topic. What I really mean is that there is narrow topic and they develop immense expertise in that narrow area of research so much so that on that one topic almost you can say that nobody in the world knows more than you do right because you're actually developing knowledge yeah yeah i mean that, that's right that's right i think i think what you just said makes sense as 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 phd students and scholars we are engaged in uh, the process of knowledge creation as opposed to knowledge consumption so uh, so there's a calling to this to this profession i would say so that is it thank you for giving us your time sudeep uh, i hope that who are watching this if they are interested in a PhD program after their MBA, uh, this could be one option. And I hope that you have helped people who are even thinking of pursuing this track. Thank you for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure meeting you. Okay, most welcome. Uh, it was great talking to you. Great, thank you.